Hi, I'm Rebecca Brand, and it's time for me to get onto the gardening wagon because I've got a lot to do in my yard. I brought a few tools today because I always seem to find a weed or two. Let me give you a tour. First of all, there is my big lawn, which is really great to relax on when I ever get the time, which really doesn't seem to happen too much. There's always a critter to deal with or a weed to pull, like this dandelion plant. This part brings the seeds that are gonna mess up your whole lawn. They fool you when they're a pretty little flower and they are everywhere on my lawn. I get tired of dandelions and I'd rather be swinging from the trees in my garden. I spent a lot of Sundays working on my garden, so I reached out to a company called Sunday and found out they have a really simple way for me to get my lawns green in better shape and get rid of my weeds. Let me show you some more. I really love my yard in Santa Barbara, California. It has perfect weather. It's amazing. And over here, it backs up to a creek. It's summertime and this is a dry creek. But in the wintertime, this really flows. There's a whole lot of work I do. I've got to take all that brush out of the creek so it doesn't dam up, like in case there is a beaver. But the beauty of having all this land is all the animals this property brings me. Like that is a nest of something. I don't know what lives there, but somebody does. It's beginning of September and my naked ladies have seen their day. I'll have to wait for next year. I bought this property when my kids were young and this is why I bought it. I bought it for all the tree swings. I wanted my kids to have a feel of living in a natural park, which was secure because it's my backyard. They spent hours and hours swinging from the trees. <laughs> this is my house. It's built into a hillside, which gives me a view of the lawns in the garden. I could always see what my kids were doing on the back lawn as I stood up on the balcony having a glass of wine for my own happy hour as a mom. I planted this really big rose garden of 33 rose bushes saved from an area way back by Palm Desert that was going under. They had to sell the land or something so they couldn't keep up the nursery, so they packed them up and shipped them to me and the kids helped me plant every one of those, which brings me special memories. It's fall now, they've had their heyday this summer, but I keep this up and it blooms about twice a year. This rose is called the Peace Rose. It's the last one of the season, but the Peace is a beautiful big flower with many different colors of the yellow and the pink and the ivory, and it smells great too. And here's my yellow delicious apple tree. It needs a trim. And I planted a lot of ground cover and mugwort, but these weeds get the best of me. I'm really having trouble keeping up. And here's my apricot tree. And about every three years, I get a really big yield on it, but then it kind of goes dormant for a couple, and that's just natural with apricot trees. And I want to show you a really special area with another little endangered creature. It's fall and the nasturtiums have died down. All of that is dead nasturtiums. We had a very hot August, but underneath that, and I'm listening, it's because that's where the wood rats live. They're not quite endangered, but there is a special little cutest little rat that doesn't come in the house, so they're my friends. They stay out here, and there's millions of these little condos they live in that look like little tiny igloos. So this is where they live. I'm not gonna get too close. I'm gonna let them be for now. I just planted an avocado tree, and this is a Haas avocado, which is really hard to get because we had fires all through the Santa Barbara area, and the growies of avocados live in Carpinteria in Santa Barbara and they were out of trees. They all got burned. So it's a big replanting. I was lucky to find this at the nursery. And I've got my old shed. It's over there and it's not ready for company. So we're gonna leave that tour for another day. I need to do an organizational video about that. All around my garden, I have put a lot of fun things just in case somebody wants to have fun while they go with me on a tour. Oh, it's a little creaky. I'm going to get off. <laughs> I must have about 30 trees in my whole yard, but this is one of my favorites. It's a cedar tree. And you can see it's getting stressed out from the California drought. I have to deep water this often. I don't wanna lose it. I've already lost one of my pine trees and it's a major tree in my yard because it holds all my swings. I don't know what to do with it. I think I might need to cut some of the heavy branches down, but I really like it for the structure to hold my swings up. Maybe someone out there knows what I should do, how I should handle that one, because I don't want to lose my tree swings. One of my most rewarding gardening projects was planting a bunch of citrus trees. And this one is a grapefruit tree, and they're really lush. When they get ripe, they turn kind of a blush pink. Breakfast tomorrow. 
I've got many tangerine trees. This tangerine is ripe now. It's a variety that ripens in the summertime. Whereas this tangerine tree will ripen later. It has a lot of new fruit on it. I have many butterflies in my garden because I plant milkweed. This milkweed has gone to seed and all those black things are the seed. So I like to scatter them about anywhere and hopefully a new one will sprout, but hopefully not on my stairway. This is such a happy plant, but it doesn't belong here. But all of this milkweed helps save the monarch butterflies. So I have a butterfly garden and I'm just hoping that they'll save some butterflies along the way. My healthiest tree is my lemon tree. I have lemons year round. I've got to make more lemon recipes on my channel. It's been here since I bought the house, which was, I don't know, 18 years ago. It's about 30 or 40 years old, but it's still giving. Trees have a definite lifespan, and this is reaching its finality, but it's so happy. I think it's gonna live a longer life than that. I might get 40 years out of it. <laughs> it might live to be as old as I am. I'm not saying what that is. <laughs> I love having little perches in my yard. I put this one up to enjoy the view. I love this lookout of my yard, and look at all the grass. Look how pretty that is. Well, what we really saw what's in that grass. It's got some issues. And this is fake turf. I don't like it. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. But it's a lot of work. And this is my side yard. It has a lot of wildflowers because it's the end of the season and they're going to seed, so I'm letting them go to seed. Like my California poppies. And in every one of these little beans, there is seed like that. So I'm hoping the birds help me scatter the seed everywhere. And I'm really excited about my new little Washington navel orange. I had had a really big tree, but for some reason the tree died, it had a disease. I didn't know what happened to it. So I just planted this, but it looks pretty happy here. I'm so excited. I've put a lot of lantana because it's drought tolerant and it goes really pretty with agaves. Let me show you my front lawn. This is my front lawn and in the afternoon it has all the cool air, so I just love it. I have a little bird bath up here in it because I can see it from my bedroom window. And during pandemic, it became such a joy to be in my house, looking out my bedroom window and having all the birds come and fly. So I filled it with hummingbird feeders, all kinds of different bird seed in my different bird feeders. And that became such a joy to me. And they come every single day. As long as I keep food in the feeders, I have to change it out about every day. They will go through an entire feeder that fast. But my birds are such my joy and my whole garden brings them to me, so I love to bring them right to my window so I can watch them. One thing about that lantana is, is it brings yellow swallowtails to my yard. The monarchs are the endangered butterflies, but there's one going by right now. But the swallowtails are some of my favorite butterflies just because they're beauty. They're not endangered, but I sure don't see many of them, so I wanna keep them happy too. That whole garden with all that lantana and all those flowers is what's called an insect garden. It brings all kinds of moss and butterflies. All those flowers feed them with pollen, so they're attracted to all that lantana, all those flowers. The red flowers, like the hibiscus, they attract the hummingbirds, and these baby fuchsias do too because of their red color. I wanted to have a hummingbird garden as well as an insect and butterfly garden. You can see it's a Bermuda grass. It has yellow patches and brown patches. I really need to green up my lawn and make it look healthier because my lawn is a crowning jewel of my whole property. My upper lawn at my house especially was looking really brown and yellow and it wasn't just because of the lack of water, it was lack of nutrients. Look what I'm talking about. It's a fescue variety, so it's really tough, but it also gets really brown looking. That's one of the things you gotta watch out with fescue. Same with Bermuda grass and all the tough turf you want for kids and dogs to play. My yard is filled with really tough turf because my kids grew up here and they did a lot of running around on that lawn, so I needed a lawn that would last. So when I contacted Sunday, I put in my address and look what they came up with. They had an aerial of my house. They showed my whole property, my roof line, and the areas where my lawn was. That was fascinating. And with my first smart lawn box, they gave me a soil test kit and also a mighty green. They gave me all the instructions to start, which was great. So I sent the soil test kit back and I'd also applied the mighty green. And then I got back the second box really quickly, which was the lawn kickstart. This is exciting because then I got to really get into what I need to do to fix my lawn. One of the first things I wanted to do was get rid of those dandelions. So with a little bottle of the dandelion doom concentrate, I put that into a gallon bag, 
that Sunday gave me and I filled it with water and I attached a sprayer and I did those dandelions and it was time to do the lawn kickstart. Easy peasy, I just hooked up the bag to my hose. Really easy to do, it fits any standard hose bib. And then I turned my hose on and in 30 seconds, I was already kickstarting my lawn. And then I just watered my lawn through the hose with all those nutrients hitting my lawn. And it has macronutrients like nitrogen, potassium, and all kinds of other micronutrients. The soil test told me how much I need to apply per the area of my lawn. This one bag is for this area of my lawn that I'm doing right here. My backyard would need three or four bags of this, so I got those for later. I loved how Sunday really analyzed where I live, my climate zone, and my lawn, and they told me it was cool season grass with a warm, wet climate and a silty and balanced pH soil. It knew my average temperature of August, the average of the highs and low, of being 66 degrees Fahrenheit. It also knew in August there's hardly any rain. It's only one tenth of an inch. So the grass is in low growth mode. I have an irrigation system and on Sunday's website, getsunday.com slash water, it has all the watering help because it knows my lawn loves about an inch of water each week, but too much is not a good thing. California, I have a dry lawn. I have to irrigate it, but less frequent and deeper watering can build a better, hardier root. And California's in a drought, so I really needed to know how much watering I should do on my lawn. And I learned I should not be watering more than three times a week. These are all the things I got from Sunday. All the supplies. Here I have them laid out on my counter for you to see how extensive their products are. This is their lawn care products. I also got a side box of weed control and pest control. Solutions that would really help me. I loved how Sunday got a unique plan for my lawn, my yard, and my house with my soil. They made it easy. To check out Sunday and get a unique plan for your yard, just click the link below, it's free. Check it out, it's really amazing. And look at this after shot. This is my lawn after six weeks of using Sunday. Amazing. It's so lush and green. I'm so happy for Sunday. I'm Rebecca Rand, subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell to get notified of my next video. And let's keep making great recipes in life. And this day, it's a recipe for a really green lawn. <laughs> See you next time. If you like this video, here's some more about outdoor gardening and things right over there. Have fun.